Hi everyone, uh, today I'm going to just show off a small device I've been working on for the past several days. I got an idea to build this device from another person online who is also building a similar uh, device. I think it was originally inspired by the Elgato string deck. Um, another person made the Arduino deck which uses the Arduino 8 um, Mega uh, development board and a touchscreen shield. I've actually got a similar development board and touchscreen shield here as well. I've taken, or I've uh, basically forked some of the code from the original developer of the Arduino deck into the command deck that I've created uh, and made quite a few changes to its actual operation. Um, some of the changes I've made are basically that um, instead of having to recompile and upload a new sketch in order to change the layout, uh, a set of command scripts is sent back and forth between the um, our command deck in order to tell it to change buttons or to display certain messages and that's basically what I'm going to demonstrate here now once we've connected to the uh, command deck we have a series of commands we can issue to it and normally when you uh, try to connect to the serial port of the AT Mega, the device will reset for some reason I think one of the Python scripts I've been running has somehow hung and caused the serial port to stay in a perpetual open state so it's not actually resetting but uh, we have a few commands we can issue reset is one of them which causes it to reset we also have um, uh, button commands we can change any of the buttons um, going across we have actually a total of 15 available buttons going from left to right top to bottom and we can set the image to any one of them. The file name is uh, the file name on the uh, SD card and it only supports reading basically uncompressed bitmap images 24-bit uh, um, per pixel. Um, instead of a uh, because the command, when you issue a command, it'll take the action, process the command, try to redraw immediately and then uh, keep going trying to issue a but the command to change 15 buttons might take a while so I've made a feature where you can freeze um, the processing where when it's frozen it'll only process the commands it won't actually do any updates on screen so we can then change the uh, buttons here now these uh, icons are just part of some icons in the Linux distribution I'm currently running. And then it'll uh, show them. Now, in addition to sending commands to it, if you touch a button, the button will be highlighted red, and it'll send back through the serial port the number of the button that was touched. So an application that is actually um, communicating with the device would be able to read the, the uh, value of the button pressed and react accordingly. Such a reaction may consist of uh, opening an application, uh, doing something in the stream, or even changing the screen itself. Another feature I've done in this particular um, modification of the deck is I've made it where we can hide and show the buttons. So for example, I can hide the first button, and I can show that first button again. When a button is unshown and hidden and shown it still remembers whether it was selected or not um, even though it starts up showing 15 buttons we can actually clear all those buttons and once the buttons are cleared we can define individual buttons and when we define a button we can actually give each button a custom size now the grid is uh, has five columns and three rows so when we add a button we specify the coordinates in terms of the uh, column number and then the row and then the width and height. So, for example, the first button could be at row, I mean, column one, row one. And then it could be uh, too wide and too high. We have a button. We had another button at uh, column three, row one. We could make it three wide and one high, and so on and so forth. The uh, graphics drawn within any given button are cropped to that button. That's another small change I made to the code. So if I set this button to be uh, 
an, like a tiled image of a flame or something, it will get cropped down so it doesn't spread outside of that button. So when we do the same image and um, the other button, it goes a little bit wider. And uh, in the uh, display, it might actually look like the second button's a little brighter than the first button. It's actually not. I think it's just the camera angle making it where, and maybe some glare from the screen. So, um, and I think the final set of uh, features I've added so far is we can set messages in three areas at the top. We have message one, message two, and message three. And that's uh, pretty much uh, all this particular uh, project uh, supports right now. Um, so you can control which buttons are set. You can clear the buttons and add buttons of any arbitrary size. It will let you add them if they overlap, but it's not really supported because uh, you're not going to get the touch at the right coordinates. Um, for example, I could add a button. And this would be button number three. I could actually start at row one, column two and go over um, a width of one and a height of two and now we got a button there no file name so it's not going to draw anything but if I were to say it'll try to draw something there but the hit detection won't be able to hit it because it sees that back button first it will only hit it if you touch the outside part but if you touch there it will see that now we can hide button one, and then um, with button one hidden, button two has also been chopped off, and it won't actually get redrawn unless we issue the redraw command. But um, And when you select outside, it won't actually um, do much. And part of the reason it's not working like that is because of the overlap. So if I were to say uh, show one, then button one comes back. Now to illustrate this in a uh, script, I've made a small Python script that uh, communicates with this. And that Python script um, basically just shows a few commands to the uh, serial port. And monitors the output of those commands in order to display some buttons. So if I touch this, it'll open up, it'll change to another page. This does something weird. I think it opens up a, a text window and goes back to the previous page. It opened a text window that's in the way here, so let me close that. And this just goes to a page. So the program's actually controlling everything, telling it to uh, clear buttons, add new buttons, change things around. And this one here actually just tells it to exit. So that's basically it in a nutshell. Um, if I actually happen to do anything useful with this device in the future, I'll post another video about it.